Now, from the combined newsrooms of KARK4 and Fox 16, breaking news coverage. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this breaking news alert on both KARK and Fox 16. I'm Kevin Kelly. And I'm Ashley Ketz. The governor is set to give us an, an update on the coronavirus. Let's listen in. Uh, Dr. Uh, Nate Smith, uh, Secretary of the Department of Health, and I'll ask him to introduce some of his team that's here. Uh, Dr. Patterson uh, will give an update on some of the equipment, uh, PPE that we're uh, concerned about in Arkansas, and of course our Surgeon General. I appreciate Dr. Bledsoe being here to comment on some of the public activity as well. Uh, first, uh, in terms of an update, uh, some of you follow the public website, and uh, that number has increased since the uh, positive test results were released on the website. And this is rough, but uh, rough in terms of the changing numbers. But as you can see, yesterday we had 33, and this chart was at 51. Now it's at 62. And so the number is 62 uh, positive uh, test results, and that includes uh, additional nine new counties across Arkansas that will be added to the geographic mix of where we're finding these positive cases. Again, uh, let me say that uh, this is not a surprise. Uh, it is simply a reflection of additional testing capacity that we have, and uh, tests are coming in for the commercial uh, test providers as well. Uh, but it does reflect the fact that we do have uh, continued uh, challenges in Arkansas, and we're starting to recognize the extent of the challenge that we face. Uh, it is clear to me that we do have increasing community spread. And whereas before it was primarily based upon travel, uh, geography uh, of where they have traveled to and back to Arkansas, uh, and the numbers increased from there, but we did have one instance of community spread and now there's more than just one. And so as a result of that, I'm announcing today additional directives that have been recommended to me uh, from our public health team uh, that have looked at this closely and uh, determined what we need to do, again, to get a handle on this and try to shorten the time frame that this is such a disruptive action in American life and in our own lives and in our business lives and in our incomes and everything that really uh, uh, we see happening here in Arkansas at the present time. And so additional directives that I want to announce now, these will be followed by official uh, Department of Health directive tomorrow. Uh, first, uh, K through 12 schools will remain closed for on-site instruction an additional three weeks until April 17th. That will then be reevaluated based upon the public health conditions at the time. Let me emphasize students and parents, education will continue through alternative instruction methods. It is important that we do not erase uh, this time period from educational uh, instruction, but that we continue it even though K through 12 schools remain closed for on-site instruction for uh, until April 17th. Secondly, I'm directing that state government employees uh, will conduct business through telecommuting and on-site work. Uh, on-site work will be limited to personnel that's necessary for the proper functioning of government. And as you know that we have enormous claims for unemployment that have to be processed. We have Medicaid to uh, deal with uh, important safety nets in our society. and. And uh, those are important functioning of governments that will continue, but we will be limiting uh, the exposure and the potential transmission, and so we are uh, limiting uh, and encouraging telecommuting. Third, uh, hospitals, uh, clinics, and medical, and, excuse me, hospitals, clinics, and mental health facilities are mandated to screen staff and visitors with temperature and symptom screening. This is an important uh, that, uh, measure that many of them are already taking, but it is important that all of them take these steps. Fourth, in terms of bars and restaurants, uh, where they, and I applaud the restaurant owners that have consistently taken 
health measures. Uh, they have moved to uh, off-site, they've eliminated on-site dining, moved to carry out and other means to serve their customers. Uh, it's been spotted, but because of the uh, increased community spread that we have seen, bars and restaurants will be closed for dine-in service and open for carry-out, drive-through, and delivery. Uh, those licensed to sell beer and wine under any permit issued by the Alcoholic Beverage Control uh, may have uh, their expanded so that they may sell corked or sealed bottles of wine to go with the purchase of food. Other specifics will be covered in the directive from ABC to carry out that uh, mandate. And fifthly, uh, I'm directing the indoor venues such as gyms are closed to non-essential functions. And so really separating what we need to be doing with what is optional to be doing and trying to reduce uh, the uh, risk of community spread and exposure, particularly of our vulnerable population. As a result of these directives, we want to add to our public message to businesses and to the general public. First, in terms of the businesses, we encourage our businesses to move to telecommuting, video conferencing, or remote, or remote work wherever possible. We recognize that's not possible in many circumstances, but those are the evaluations that businesses should conduct. They should implement screening of staff and visitors. They should enforce social distance, distancing. And the businesses in Arkansas should plan for the future by updating continuity of operation plans. In other words, we want to keep business operating, and to do that, you have to plan for the future. You have to determine how you can keep your business going consistent with the public health guidance that's being provided today. To the public, older individuals and those with serious medical conditions should stay home to the extent possible. Avoid unnecessary contact with visitors. Secondly, avoid social gatherings of more than 10 people. Third, use the drive-through, carry-out, and delivery services of local restaurants. That only is a good public health practice, but it also supports the small business owner here in the state. Fourth, avoid unnecessary trips where exposure to large groups is likely. Fifth, enjoy walking, hiking, fishing, and other outdoor activities consistent with social distancing. And six, do not visit nursing homes, retirement centers, or long-term care facilities unless providing critical assistance. These are common sense measures that many are already taking in light of the national emergency and state emergency that we see. But we also wanted to make it very clear, and in terms of our, our churches and our synagogues, uh, our mosque, we hope that uh, the, they will continue to make good decisions and our, while they uh, make their own judgments and determinations with our separation of church and state, we do think that it would be wise that uh, they also abide by these restrictions in terms of limiting uh, the number of people and probably canceling services in most instances and looking for other ways to be able to fellowship, look for creative ways to be able to communicate their message. And so they need to be creative. Uh, they need to uh, minister uh, to their congregations in the same, with the same uh, innovation that we're asking businesses to do. With that, I'd like uh, Dr. Smith to come. And Dr. Smith, why don't you make your comments, and then we'll have uh, Dr. Patterson, and then we'll go to some of your team. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I understand these were big steps, uh, but very appropriate for the situation that we are coming into. Um, we have uh, communicated with you daily uh, so that you're aware of, of changes, and um, I think all the steps that we've made have been appropriate to where we are as this outbreak evolves. I want to give a little bit more details on some of the changes. We have gone from what we reported yesterday as 33 uh, positive cases to 62. Uh, those were uh, 23 that were done in our lab and um, six that were reported to us from reference labs. 
uh, and the nine uh, new counties that are added to our map uh, are available on our website, but I'll just go through them. Uh, Pope County, Van Buren, Sevier, Searcy, Craighead, Clark, Poinsett, Independence, and Grant. Uh, of, of the uh, new cases, the majority uh, were adults. We did have two children involved. Uh, there's uh, three sort of frequently asked questions that I'd like to briefly address in my comments. First of all, what is a positive case? When we say it's a positive case, that is someone who has tested positive either in our lab or in one of the reference labs and been reported to us. Uh, now there's a lot of rumors and a lot of action going on based on something other than that. Sometimes it's just someone who's gone for a test for COVID-19. That's not a positive case. Only if they get a result back and that's positive do we consider it a positive case. Sometimes people take action based on someone who happened to be related to or had contact with a positive case. That's not a positive case either. If an individual has had contact with someone who has had a positive test result, if that person has no symptoms, they should self-quarantine for 14 days. Basically try and remain uh, at home, away from others as much as possible. If they develop symptoms, uh, then they should either call ahead to their provider or they should go to one of the uh, uh, drive-through testing facilities and go ahead and get tested. Uh, if they test positive, then they are a case. Um, and then, uh, uh, then that's what we consider a, a, a positive case. And it would be wise for them to uh, contact the people that they've been in contact with and inform them of that. As we're getting more and more cases, we're going to have to redirect some of our contact investigation energies towards three priority areas. One is healthcare workers. Uh, that's a very important group because patients may have, may have been exposed. The second is those who are residing in nursing homes and other long-term care facilities. Those are areas where we have very vulnerable individuals. And then other settings where a large number of individuals may have been exposed. Those are going to be our three priority groups. Uh, we're not going to be able to contact every single person in Arkansas who's had contact with a positive case, uh, but we'll give that information out so people know what to do. Lastly, a uh, question I've gotten is, is uh, should we be afraid? Uh, and my short answer to that is no. This is a serious situation. We're going to need to make some pretty dramatic changes to our lives in the short term. Uh, but these are things that we have planned. Uh, these are things that we understand based on the situation. And uh, we have many people working together in partnership uh, to respond. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Chancellor Patterson, who is one of our many very good partners. Thank you, Dr. Smith, and uh, thank you, Governor Hutchinson and your staff for your leadership in our efforts to uh, contain and mitigate the COVID-19 uh, uh, outbreak here in, in Arkansas. Um, there are, are several top of mind issues for us as we manage uh, the situation across the state. The first is adequate screening of people who, who might have coronavirus infection. Uh, and uh, as, as I have mentioned previously, uh, the, the most important top of mind issue to convey is that the best, the worst place to be screened is in an emergency room or a physician's office. Uh, and the best place to be screened is either uh, by telephone, uh, online, uh, and UAMS Health Now provides online services for initial screening, or in drive-through centers, and there are currently eight drive-through centers. And you can be screened at any, through any of those three mechanisms to determine whether you actually need any testing at all. Uh, and so just to give you a, a point of reference, uh, UAMS has screened 4,200 individuals uh, since this outbreak began in Arkansas. Almost half of those were screened yesterday, so this is escalating very rapidly. Uh, we screened 1,500 individuals through uh, our drive-through uh, screening service, which is located right next to the hospital, and it's easy to find because there are signs everywhere. 25% uh, of the people that we have screened, uh, of those 1,500, have required coronavirus testing. Uh, and so far, of the people that we have screened at UAMS, seven have turned up positive. So that gives you a rough sense of the proportion of uh, positive tests that are turning up. 
Uh, now, as, as time goes on, as the governor has, has said, uh, it's to be expected that the number of identified um, uh, individuals will increase, uh, and that's not uh, a cause for alarm. And as the availability of testing fluctuates, the number of positives fluctuate. That point where we reach a plateau, where we understand that there is containment, is going to be a lagging, in, the testing will be a lagging indicator. So our control of the infection will occur before we actually know that it occurs based on positive test results. Uh, and the positive test results would lag by about a week uh, beyond the point in which we have containment. Uh, now, testing uh, is limited within the state of Arkansas. The uh, Arkansas Department of Health uh, has been the, the bellwether for providing testing services within the state, and I know they're working assiduously to increase their throughput. Uh, UAMS will have our own in-house assay for testing uh, uh, individuals who require COVID-19 testing, uh, and that testing will be available no later than the beginning of next week. That will add an additional 240 assays per day to the uh, number that can be performed within state. Uh, and then we've uh, acquired uh, three uh, machines from uh, Genmark uh, that will allow us, each of those machines should be able to do about 150 uh, uh, assays per day. So that would get us roughly, roughly up to at least 600 assays per day at UAMS that will be added to the pool of assays that are available to be done within state. And, and the advantage of doing the assays in state is not only are, are we able to keep track, better track of who's getting the test, uh, but the throughput is substantially improved. So our, our assays would be six to nine hour turnaround time uh, rather than the several day turnaround time that is, is we're seeing with the commercial assays. Um, testing is important, but also we need to think about how we, we manage uh, the, the patients that we care for. Uh, of, of the 62, 61 patients who have been detected positive, only very few have required hospitalization. Uh, but uh, hospitalized patients with COVID-19 uh, infection are uh, very, very resource intensive, including uh, personal protective equipment that is necessary to protect healthcare providers and prevent spread. Uh, so just yesterday, uh, our UAMS team working with the uh, Arkansas Department of Health uh, has uh, issued new guidelines for healthcare providers within the state for uh, appropriate uh, personal protective equipment utilization and conservation so that we have the right equipment that is available. And then the, the Department of Finance and Administration under uh, Governor Hutchinson's guidance has worked with the UAMS uh, procurement and sourcing team to identify a, a source for um, for very large bulk purchases of personal protective equipment uh, that we can make available to hospitals across the state who want to, to repurchase it from that that allocation. So uh, I, I think that we are in a good state for the, the situation as it exists right now. Obviously, we are war gaming uh, uh, worse scenarios. So we are. Um, making sure that we have adequate hospital beds, ventilators, uh, other needs that we will have for our patients should the situation continue to evolve. And two final comments. One is the governor just announced uh, restrictions uh, within the state very appropriately. Um, we, we also are increasing the restrictions on visitation and egress within our health care facilities. Northwest Arkansas. Um, has announced uh, a, a reduction in non-emergent uh, clinical services. Uh, we did that here in central Arkansas a few days ago, uh, and we're all restricting visitation and patient access. Uh, and we ask the public's understanding that this is for their own good as well as uh, for the good of our health care providers who are putting themselves in harm's way. And, and lastly, as we shut down schools, uh, we're also shutting down venues for blood donation. Uh, there is no restriction on blood donation, um, but with fewer blood drives, that is going to put pressure on our uh, blood supply here in Arkansas. So I would encourage everyone to be civic-minded and think about this as a particularly opportune time to take uh, an hour from your day uh, and, and provide a pint of blood because it's going to be needed by somebody out there. Blood, sir. So thanks, Governor, and thanks to Dr. Smith and Patterson. Um, I just wanted to cover a couple of things. I've been talking to a lot of folks in the healthcare community 
there have been a, a few issues that have continued to come up. Of course, the big one is the testing issue, and that's been already addressed by Dr. Smith and Patterson. Uh, it's not there where we want it, but it's uh, been greatly enhanced and greatly increased, and so we're headed in the right direction. The other issue that the providers were consistently reaching out to me about was telemedicine. Thanks to the governor's proclamation, telemedicine has been opened up in the state. Um, and this is really important for our state for a couple of reasons. First of all, patients, we don't want them running to the clinic, especially if they're sick because they'll, they can expose other people. But we know that uh, patients need to get in to see their doctors. They need to be able to uh, get their chronic medicines and, and those sort of things. So by, uh, by empowering telemedicine, uh, the patients can stay at home, they can interact with a telemedicine platform or through the phone with their provider. Uh, and then the other thing that Governor Hutchinson's proclamation did was it allowed reimbursement to the clinicians for the work they're doing. This is important not only uh, for the patients, but also for the clinics because we, what we don't want to have happen in a crisis is have some of these rural clinics that are dependent on their patients coming in and seeing them and, and being reimbursed for these visits to suddenly be in a financial crisis and have to shut their doors. That would be a, a nightmare. So uh, the telemedicine situation by opening it up has solved two major issues and that's been a really good thing for the state. And then lastly is the, uh, the PPE issue. This obviously has been a huge concern. Uh, I've heard from uh, a number of individuals around the state who are working in clinics, nursing homes, emergency departments, and the like. Uh, Dr. Patterson and Dr. Smith have all, all, uh, already touched on this. Um, but uh, I've had a number of people who've reached out to me. And, and interestingly, I've had a number of uh, private citizens who in a panic a month ago or two months ago went out and bought uh, large stashes of surgical masks and N95 masks. And so last night on my Twitter feed, I made a comment about this and I said, if you have a large stash and you are feeling guilty or you uh, want to do something with that, contact me because I have people in the private sector who will pay for those uh, and take them off your hands and you can, we can put them to good use. And uh, you know, the purpose of that is not to cast judgment or to ask questions, it's just to get protection for those who are in the field. We want our people protected. And, and uh, the way I look at this is, is that this is hand-to-hand -hand combat at this point. This is trench warfare and we're going to leave no stone unturned to get the, the uh, resources that our people need to stay protected and to do the job that they, uh, they have uh, been sacrificially doing. Um, and my last comment is just simply this. Um, over the course of the last five days, I've been on the phone uh, a number of hours. I've talked to literally hundreds of people around the state, not just healthcare folks, but business leaders, hospital CEOs, insurance executives, elected officials on the state and national level. And it has been really an unbelievably inspiring experience for me. I wish that the people of Arkansas could be uh, like a fly on the wall and see some of these conversations and these interactions without exception. These individuals that I've spoken with have gone above and beyond to help uh, in any way they possibly could. Most of them, if not all of them, have given me their personal cell phones and said, call me any time, day or night, if I can help uh, you or the state with anything. And it, to me, is a great reminder that we live in an incredible state. We're a small state, but we're connected very tightly. We have a tight community here. We all know each other. And the fact that I can pick up the phone and call folks on their cell phone and get the answers that we need to, uh, to help fight this virus is an amazing thing and a great advantage for us in Arkansas. So really thankful for that, thankful for Governor Hutchinson's leadership and the leadership of Drs. Patterson and Smith as we move forward. Before we turn over questions, I'd like to have uh, Dr. Smith come and introduce some of the key members of your team. And I know some of them have some special comments that uh, you might want to have them make. Very good. Thank you, Governor. Um, the Arkansas Department of Health has really got a large team. Most of them are very, very busy uh, working on our response. But I ask uh, four of them to come up here because I think it's important for you to see who they are and hear some of the issues uh, that you. Yes. Um, so that you can hear uh, some of the issues that either you have questions about or, or probably should be asking questions about. Uh, first, I'd like to have Dr. Geraldine Jones, who was with us uh, yesterday. Dr. Jones is an emergency medicine physician. She's on the faculty at uh, UAMS, but also our medical director for preparedness and response. I'd l like to have her briefly share some of the activities that we are involved in to respond to COVID-19. Geraldine? Thank you, Dr. Smith. So really briefly, I just want to let everyone know that the um, preparedness branch, as well as everyone in the Department of Health, have an all-hands-on-deck all approach for this outbreak. We are steadily working overtime to make sure that the 
individuals and the citizens of Arkansas are protected. So some of the things that we are operating on, um, our emergency operations center is fully staffed and fully operational, meaning that everyone is down there working hours beyond normal duty hours, some of them 24 hours a day, to make sure that we get information to where it needs to go, whether that be with our federal partners or out to the community. Our nurses are performing um, contact tracing, and Dr. Smith already alluded to some changes that will be happening with respect to that, but that it is an important service that we are providing as we go through this, through this event. Um, we are also working very diligently with our federal partners to procure PPE. I know that is an issue that has come up a number of times and it has been dress addressed um, multiple times from this dais. Um, there's partnerships with our, um, our industrial partners in terms of things that can be procured and paid for, but we're also working with our federal partners to get the things that we need for the state. We were allotted 25% um, of our allotment in our first shipment, and we expect more, and we will get those out to individuals that need it as soon as possible. The other thing I'd like to bring up is that our um, call center has been operating at full capacity and has fielded over 6,400 calls since it opened um, with a very, very very small backlog, so think, people are working very diligently to make sure the public knows what they, has the information that they need to move forward. Um, finally, I just want to make sure that everyone knows where to go for information. We'd like for people to visit our website at www.healthy.arkansas.gov for information with respect to the outbreak, as well as be feel free to call the call center at 1-800-803-7847. Um, if there's any information that is not available on the website, you can reach out to us as well because we want to get the information to you all that you need. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Uh, I'd like to also introduce uh, Dr. Naveen Patil, who is an infectious disease specialist. He's our medical director for infectious diseases and is also voluntary faculty at UAMS. I've asked uh, Dr. Patil to talk a little bit about what businesses can do to help slow or prevent the spread of COVID-19. Thank you, Governor and Dr. Smith. Just like uh, healthcare facilities and other uh, institutions are implementing measures to screen their employees, uh, we would like to encourage all uh, businesses, whether large or small, to, to start screening their employees for fever and symptoms like fever, cough, or sore throat, so that uh, you can uh, implement protective measures for your other employees and uh, continue to uh, do your business operations. Also, if you can ensure availability of hand sanitizers within your businesses, and also if, if employees can be spaced around within the facility, that would also help mitigate some of the situation. So um, just uh, to emphasize uh, hand washing, screening of employees would go a long way just like other healthcare institutions and other entities have done. We would like to encourage all businesses to be proactive. There are several businesses that I've heard have already have a plan of uh, continued operations and what to do. If you suspect any case uh, or have any issues with that, you can call our hotline and we can guide you through how to uh, mitigate the issues. Thank you. Next, I would like to have uh, Stephanie Williams, our, my chief of staff, to come and talk a little bit about uh, rural areas and how they can implement some of these changes. Uh, Stephanie has uh, worked and uh, lived in rural Arkansas for much of her career and has a lot of insight. This is rural health has been a special area of uh, interest for her. Stephanie. Thank you, Dr. Smith. I would just um, mention that um, as somebody that's lived in rural Arkansas, I, you know, I know we're, we're familiar with how to do this. We're typically pretty, um, pretty self-sufficient and when we live 30 miles plus from some of our cities and, and major metropolitan areas. And so I've just tried to remind myself that, you know, we, we can handle this. We've done this. We do this every time we have a significant weather event in our state and we have to make changes. It's certainly it's challenging for all of 
of us to implement and observe the, um, the plans that we are having to implement for social distancing, uh, but it's certainly doable. And it also gives us an opportunity to spend time with family, to think about those in our family that in particular may feel very isolated by some of these things. They don't use smartphones, they may not um, use the internet or have access to the internet. This is a good time to check on friends and family by phone or stopping by and just saying hello from the driveway. Um, there are things that we can do. It gives us an opportunity to be creative and um, I heard a story yesterday about a family that was using this as an opportunity to teach their kids how to write a letter. You know, sometimes we forget some of these things that we, we do socially. Some of those things are still really very effective and very meaningful. So I would just say um, this gives us an opportunity to think about others and how we can do that. I also want to mention county judges and mayors. I've spoken to quite a few. Um, also, some of the staff that are working out in our community health centers and our private clinics, they've been really great about thinking about how to serve folks there at, at the local level in those small communities. And I know they have ideas and guidance that, that they'll be sharing. Um, but I, I just think um, our local communities, um, you know, we need to think about how we can support one another, how we can check on one another, and, um, and we can handle this. It is going to be stressful, but um, we can do it. Thank you. You got one more introduction? I do. All right. Uh, we got to get questions here right. pretty quick. <laughs> yes. Uh, finally, I'd like to have um, uh, Dr. Greenfield uh, come and, and speak to us uh, again briefly about uh, some of the challenges, some of the issues, uh, messaging uh, to our diverse communities in this state. So good afternoon. So the the focus of everything today has been a, a state that is under a, a big challenge. And minority communities, diverse communities, um, we are all facing this together. We're a family. Uh, I would like the communities to color and I would like the state as a whole to know that we're really in this together and that while the information that's being provided seems to be coming very fast, it's as if we're drinking from a fire hydrant. The information is valid, but there's a lot of information and, and in some cases there's misinformation, but the resources that we provided for you today and the messaging that we're providing for you today are all uh, united to make us a stronger state and a stronger people. So as we come here today, just keep in mind that we're working through this and we will get through this together. And I have my Secretary of Education, but I'm going to wait for an education question because I think it might come <laughs> up, and we'll pull him up here at that point. Yes? Well, let's throw it right out there then. Uh, what's the status of state testing right now? All right. Secretary Key, there was a reason you're here. Yes, sir. <laughs> so the status of state testing, as you know, until today, we had planned to start back to school after spring break. Uh, given that that is now delayed uh, for at least another three weeks, uh, we are looking at all the options. I know that uh, there's also a conversation going on in Washington right now with the U.S. Department of Education regarding assessment and accountability. Uh, so we're keeping an eye and we are directly involved in those conversations. So nothing uh, certain on that yet, but I'm sure that we'll have a, an answer uh, within the next several days. Yeah. Uh, Governor, you've been heavy in your praise of the private sector and the way they've acted responsibly uh, up until now. So why? Uh, is mandatory closure now, and uh, you mentioned April 17th for the schools, but how long for the gyms, the restaurants, and the bars? Well, in, in, in those terms, uh, first of all, that should start tomorrow, and it should be uh, until further notice. Uh, and so that is the circumstance until we're able to get a handle on this and, and know exactly where we are as a state. And I do applaud, again, uh, the private sector, the business owners, uh, and but whenever I look at it, uh, a, a majority of them have already gone to uh, uh, no dining in, uh, carry out only, and so this gives some level playing field to everyone, first of all, but also it extends some opportunities for them that we've, we've uh, talked with some of the restaurant owners as to what we can do that would be helpful to them, and so uh, it's it's going to be a very difficult time. We're going to we're going to uh, lose some businesses as a result of this. We hope it only for a short time, but we also want to help as many survive as they can. And so there's some options here, and they're being innovative as to how to carry out and and uh, serve the public uh, consistent with this. And they're very public minded. I mean, many of them have made the judgments already that this is the right thing to do to go only go to uh, carry out. 
Uh, so, uh, but, but with the uh, expansion of some of the, the number of counties that this is involved in, it need to go statewide, and with the uh, increased incidences of community spread, this is necessary. Has there been anything, uh, I guess, tossed around about potentially suspending foreclosures, evictions, things like that? Well, there's discussions, first of all, with the Department of Finance and uh, in terms of uh, the tax filing. Uh, I expect just as the federal tax filing it will remain the same on April 15th, the federal government is delaying their payment schedule and delaying that. And so that's something that we're looking at. I'm going to be meeting as I leave here with our finance people to see what, what we should be doing as a state. In terms of foreclosures, rents that are due, uh, I would, I'd call upon uh, the uh, business owner, uh, the landlord, uh, the energy companies uh, to be compassionate, uh, to understand there's going to be a, a loss of income. Uh, let's work with them uh, and uh, let's make sure that we uh, act in the right way uh, to our neighbors. But those are private sector decisions that there's not any government mandate in that regard. Uh, yes, John. Uh, have you, the ACLU wrote you a letter asking you to consider commuting sentences of prisoners who have health risks or are in the final year of their sentence. Have you given that consideration or have you had any other talks with uh, local officials about how to ease crowding at criminal detention facilities? Uh, our first uh, obligation is to make sure that we keep the uh, prisons uh, safe, uh, healthy, and that's one of the reasons we've had two different directives that's tightened up and really uh, just, just as we did in uh, long-term care facilities with prohibiting visitors, we've also prohibited visitors for the time being uh, in our prison uh, community. And that's a real hardship as it is on our senior citizens, uh, but it was necessary to maintain the health and, and reduce the potential of exposure. More broadly than that, I'm not aware of any particular problem with overcrowding uh, I think it's uh, you know being maintained properly and taking the proper precautions. We'll continue to look at it. The Board of Corrections has their emergency powers in the event that there is a need to take action. Janelle. Dr. Blitzo mentioned uh, yeah. telemedicine and, and really praised that effort, but we've heard from some folks saying that their insurance companies, because they weren't prepared for this, aren't working with them on telemedicine. Is there any instruction that you can give maybe the Department of Insurance to work or encourage insurance companies do you want to answer that? Sure. That's a great question. <clears throat> and one of the big problems with all that's happened is there's been so much change in so little time. Uh, I've been in touch with a variety of insurance executives and uh, over at DHS as well. And the payers are in agreement. This is a crisis. They're doing everything they can to adjust. Um, I've also talked to a lot of providers who've said, well, this insurance company or that insurance company isn't reimbursing me or has said. And I think what that is is not coming from the top. I think it's just it's, everything's changed so quickly that the memo hasn't gotten down to all the employees in the insurance companies just yet. And so the people who are answering the phones might not have the, mo the most recent um, adjustments. But uh, from what I can tell, our insurance companies and other payers are adjusting to this crisis and are doing everything they can to make sure they're following the directives of Governor Hutchinson's proclamation. Yeah, we've only recently gotten uh, CPT codes for this, this billing, so that has to be plugged into the system. So there's a delay there. but. We at UAMS have experienced nothing but support for this transition. In terms of people who test positive, uh, are they still going to be required to be quarantined? Uh, and are you going to be checking on them to see if they're actually quarantined? Uh, yes. Uh, anyone who has had contact, been in contact with a, a, a case, a positive case, someone who's tested positive for uh, COVID-19 uh, then they do need to be in uh, self-quarantine for 14 days. If they develop symptoms, then they need to be tested. Uh, as we're increasing the number of people who have had contact, though um, more and more of that is going to have to be on the initiative of the individuals to go ahead and do that, we will have less and less ability to do that uh, follow-up on each particular individual. We will focus on health care workers, uh, nursing homes, uh, situations in which there are large numbers who have been, uh, been in contact or been exposed. But 
we're going to have to depend more and more on individual Arkansans taking the initiative and doing uh, those things to protect, uh, to, to protect other people in their community. We will uh, continue to uh, monitor them. If they're at home, uh, we'll continue to uh, keep in touch with them, uh, make sure they have what they need, but, but stay in uh, home isolation. Obviously, if they go into a healthcare setting, uh, then, uh, then that will be uh, under, the, under the hospital or, or wherever they're gone. Yeah, I, I would just say, you know, the healthcare provider or system that makes the diagnosis has a responsibility to follow up individuals who test positive. With the uh, really substantial increase in the number of cases, we're still tracking down information on these. Uh, most of these um, are uh, either contacts of a known case, uh, and some are travel-related, but there are some we don't yet know exactly how they uh, acquired uh, their infection, and, and uh, some of them we may not. Um, but we're seeing more and more parts of our state reporting cases. Uh, more uh, clusters will likely uh, become uh, obvious. Uh, we'll try and understand this as well as we can, but we want our focus to be on preventing the spread. Uh, later on, we can, we can uh, study the epidemiology. Do we have a current demographic breakdown on this? Does it tend to be more elderly? And you mentioned two children are, are involved in this too. Can you hand my folder there? Um, Again, with the uh, rapid increase in cases, I don't have um, uh, as much analysis as I'll have for you uh, at future uh, press briefings. I can say that of the cases that we've had so far, uh, six have been children, uh, 15 have been uh, 65 and older, and 41 have been uh, adults in age range of 19 to 64. And we'll have, uh, we'll have more information uh, for you um, in subsequent briefings. Dr. Smith, uh, do you expect an influx of people going to grocery stores, retailers with this uh, restriction on restaurants, and do you have any advice for them to get? As the governor has uh, said, uh, we want to encourage all people uh, in Arkansas to avoid any unnecessary uh, travels and, and visits to places where there are other people. And this includes shopping. We don't want people to stop shopping for groceries, but uh, you don't make unnecessary trips and uh, when you go practice social distancing so you're not in close contact with your your with your neighbors and others who um, uh, uh, you know could facilitate the spread of, of COVID-19 uh, again we have to live our lives but we need to be very mindful uh, that there's a that there's risk now in our community that we didn't have before All right, we have a question right here right here, right here. Can you, um We have been collecting that information, and we will be putting that on our website, uh, hopefully by the end of today, if not uh, tomorrow. We do have sites that do that throughout the state, uh, in addition to the large site at UAMS, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make that available. I do recommend, though, for uh, those before you go to a, a test site, is to call, and we'll have those contact numbers ahead. Uh, there are all sorts of supply chain issues, as you can imagine. You want to, yes. Swabs. Yes, and we're working to address that issue, but there'll be other bottlenecks as we go along. You just want to call ahead and make sure that they're actually testing at that time. He, it's it's not a one size fits all uh, because visitation, for instance, for pediatric patients, uh, the limitations that you can impose are very different than limitations that you can impose on adult patients. So it really depends on specific patient populations that that you're talking about. But in general, we have been at one visitor uh, per patient at UAMS uh, during restricted hours. And we are, are looking at ways to, to make that more stringent because we think that that's the right thing to do. 
the directive that goes out from the Department of Health will give some specific guidance on screening visitors and staff. Our objective is to help prevent people who are incubating or who are, have active COVID-19 infection from coming in and exposing patients and other staff. Back here, John. Yeah, uh, can you give us an update on some of those earlier cases? How many people who had previously been hospitalized have been released? How many people are in ICU? That's very dynamic, and um, I, I really am tr going to try and get you accurate information, but there's people coming and going. We really only have about two or three people in the hospital at this time. Uh, there have been some who have been admitted and discharged. We have, uh, uh, we have a couple who have been in and out of nursing homes. So it's a very dynamic uh, situation, and, and um, I, I can't give you an accurate number at this point in time, but we'll try and give some guidance on that. Remember, these numbers change, but we'll try and provide that um, uh, as we go along. What will be the point that we deem somebody recovered from one of these cases? Well, there's a symptom recovery when someone's feeling fine. Uh, we have put out guidance now on how we can um, uh, determine when someone is considered safe to go back to their usual activities, and that's uh, also on our website. And that's well, there for clinicians. One final question right here. Uh, Dr. Patterson, you uh, mentioned that you guys are looking at restricting further the, the visitation. We've heard some, from some pregnant women, for instance, who are being told they have to choose between having their midwife or their spouse in the delivery room with them because of these restrictions. Can you, are there any exceptions for medical professionals or are you guys looking at? Our, our guidelines are guidelines and, and there are always situations in which on a case-by-case -case basis you know, for instance, end-of-life issues where, where exceptions are made, and we, we, we're weighing the balance between what we can do to be compassionate and what we can do to be safe, and sometimes it, it's a, a difficult consideration to make, and, and I, I think our health care providers are, are doing a great job under difficult circumstances. As you can see from uh, the actions that we've taken today, uh, we're being very aggressive. Uh, and leaning forward to get a handle on this, uh, to do all we can to make the pain that we're having now in our society and in our businesses short-lived. And that's the whole goal and that's objective of what we're doing. I want to thank uh, all of the team here that's done extraordinary work under very difficult circumstances. And thank you all again for making sure that uh, the public is aware of exactly what's happening step by step in our state. Thank you very much. You've been listening to the governor give his daily briefing on the COVID-19 situation here in the state of Arkansas. And, and let's be honest, this should come as no surprise. This is, in fact, our new normal. So let us briefly recap what the governor and some of his officials had to say. 62 positive cases have now been confirmed in the state. That's an increase of 29 since yesterday. Dr. Nate Smith with the Department of Health saying that the majority of these new cases are adults, two of them being children. And if we want to break it down a little bit further, six of the cases involve kids, 15 are 65 and older, and 41, the largest number, are between the ages of 19 and 64. And possibly the biggest news out of this, the statewide directive that K through 12 schools on site learning will be canceled until April 17th. They will be closed and they will then reevaluate the situation. So AMI days will continue. They wanted to reiterate that learning will still happen here in the state of Arkansas. Also, we got some new information on state workers. They're encouraging telecommunication and also hospitals, other clinical facilities, mental health facilities. They're now asking for people to have their temperature taken and to do additional screenings as people are coming in the doors. Also, bars and restaurants. This is something new we learned statewide. They will be closed for dine-in, only open for drive-through, delivery, and takeout. Also, gyms are closing across the state. That's a new directive from the governor for non-essential functions. So it sounds like if you're a manager, you can still go in and work. But if you are a visitor, a patron, someone who's paying to use a gym, they will be closed until further notice. Also, businesses, they're encouraging big and small to work from home, work remotely, use video conferencing, also limit staff and visitors. You, we heard his tone. It was very aggressive and firm this time as he ran down those changes because these are all, of course, 
to limit exposure because we now have an increasing amount of community spread, which is something we're just now hearing for the first time today. And that community spread, if you were joining us and watching the governor speak earlier, said was a, a, a direct result as to why he implemented a number of these new initiatives, which we're showing to you on your screen as well. I want to touch briefly on what you mentioned, Ashley, about the no dine-in service at bars and restaurants. Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr. also addressing this earlier in the day, saying that bars and restaurants will be shut down, but emphasizing that curbside and takeout are the way to go. Uh, the governor also saying that this is a fault, but emphasizing this is the right thing to do. Again, this should come as no surprise. The numbers will most likely continue to rise in the coming days and weeks, but the emphasis and the message today is maintain social distancing, use common sense, wash your hands, stay at home if you're not feeling well. The list goes on. We all know what we need to do. In fact, everyone should act as if they have the coronavirus, even if they don't, just as a precaution. That's right. And this situation will continue to evolve and stay with us both here on KRK and Fox 16. We'll have much more on your news tonight. This has been breaking news coverage from the combined newsrooms of KARK4 and Fox 16. We now return to your regularly scheduled program.